Fantastic. I think we're uh, ready to get started today. Um, I am so excited for today's talk. Uh, the Gender Equity Initiative Brown Bag Lunch is thrilled to have Stacy here. Um, I'm going to give a little bio, and um, then we're going to get Stacy to uh, come in and, and uh, entertain us for a bit. So here we go. <clears throat> Uh, Stacy's love of everything vintage began early as her parents were part-time antique dealers and she grew up in New Jersey going to auctions in the 1970s. She went to college at William Patterson University graduating in 1985 with a degree in communications. After having experience working in TV production and finance in multiple countries, when she moved back to New York City in the 1990s, she went through a career transition from being a foreign exchange dealer to a set director. And it was during that time in 1997 that she began selling antiques on eBay. She quickly transitioned to selling mainly photos, manuscripts, and ephemera. In 2001, she moved to Massachusetts and started a full-time business, which she called House of Mirth, my favorite, favorite book. <laughs> several, <laughs> several, of her, several of her photo finds have been included in numerous exhibitions and publications throughout the world. In her own words, one of the reasons why I love photo albums and diaries is that they are unique glimpses into history. Nothing makes me happier than discovering and sharing with the public a new story. So take it away, Stacy. Hi, is it three o'clock yet? <laughs> anyway, here we are. I'm going to like um, um, just start this and bear with me because I'm a little nervous. Okay, so while we're bearing with you, I'm just going to say if anybody has any um, questions, uh, please put them in the chat. We have everybody muted um, at this point, but um, we'll be able to take questions later. But especially if you have something that comes up during the chat um, and it piques your interest, please just um, add it to the chat for a question for afterwards. Thank okay. you. Am I sharing? Oh, there we go. Sharing the screen. Yep. Hello. Looks good. Photos. You can see it? Yep. Okay. So I love snapshots, as most of you know. Um, I think they're quirky and fun and little tiny um, beautiful objects that can be art or history. So in 1888, Kodak uh, developed a camera that an amateur could use. So instead of having to go to a studio or hire a photographer to take a photo, you could get your own camera. They would come with a hundred um, pictures in the camera. You would take the roll of film and send the entire camera back to Kodak to develop the film, and then they would insert another roll of film into the camera, send it back with the pictures and the negatives. And if you find 100 of these kind of photos, uh, you found a little treasure because people look for the original 100 that came from a roll. And I've had two of them over the last 25 years. So this is a Kodak number one. And I think it's, uh, nope, this one's not dated from the back, but it's 1888, 1889. And this is a Kodak number two. So the round part where the image is is slightly bigger. And this one's from Mexico in 1890. In the early 1900s, um, real photo postcards became a thing. So you would get a camera <clears throat> that was made for real photo postcards, you could have a stylus and write an identification, as you can see on this one, the U.S. Forestry Hot Springs, Arkansas. Um, and that's the back. And you can also date a lot of the postcards by what kind of stamp box it has. And I would just say Google it because there's a couple of great websites where you can date these. And here are some more examples of real photo postcards. I love cats. So if you know me, you know I have a lot of cat photos. And sports teams. And homesteading. And patriotism. In the United States, a lot of the photos you'll find are patriotic. And that's a theme that goes through every era. 
and I'm going pretty fast here. So, woo. Okay, cyanotypes, one of my favorites. So they've been around since around the 1840s, but they really gained popularity at the turn of the century, especially with girls' colleges. You'll find a lot of them there. And um, mock weddings were very popular at the time. So the women would dress up as men and women and marry each other, a uh, very common theme. Um, and cyanotypes were really great because you didn't need a dark room. So you could make them at home with sunlight. So, you know, it was easy and people loved them. You also can find a lot of them on cloth fabric. So this is an example, a composite photo that's on a piece of silk. Then we move on, say 1910s, you find a lot of travel albums and travel across the United States. So this is a photo from, well, Wyoming. And personally, I love when there's writing on the image. Um, a lot of people collect that. More from that album from Wyoming. I love, so I love little snapshots because they're a little piece of art and some of them are masterpieces. And um, a lot of folk art dealers like snapshots, but I also like photo albums because they're, they're unique pieces of history. So this is a photo album. Um, I think the photo album is all roller coasters from different places um, from the 1910s. And when people drew on album pages, I love that. Collage is a theme that you can find pretty often. World War I and hand-tinted photos. Um, another great thing that you will see. More of the travel across country. Pretty funky car there. These are just some examples. Oh yeah, there's Shirley Temple. So in the 1930s and 40s, you also find a lot of Hollywood actors and actresses and a lot of the photo albums was a big thing that you will find. World War II, this fellow was killed in action, unfortunately. Um, but World War II, you know, they, the camera was put in the hands of all these soldiers and there's so many World War II albums and, you know, they tell a unique story, which is something I love. Also around the time of World War II, you start getting the arcade photo and the photo booth. So this is from Hawaii, most likely, um, and African-Americans. Always, there's always arcade photos with the hula girls. Those are very popular. Photo booth photos, different kinds. And this is a photomatic where um, you would take it and it would develop in the tray that you see here. And that's the back of that. Um, they're very popular also. You can always find photos on ID cards. Taxi operators, badges, those are very popular right now. And this is uh, lots of ID cards from the Ohio Sports Enterprises. Photos of mugshots. And this one's pretty cool because they um, colored this in for some reason. Quirky, this, I have this photo album. This guy is dressed up in a different costume in this photo album. This must be 50 photos of him in different costumes. And I wish I knew more about him. He didn't run anything down. Hand tinted photos. Before there was color photography, people used to tint the photos themselves or there were professional um, tinters. I can't think of the word, so there you go. In the 1950s, this type of Kodachrome color photography became very popular. It was actually invented in the 1930s 
but it's rare to find these in the 30s. I, I collect these personally and um, I love them. And this is one of my favorite photos. They're very glossy and just gorgeous color. And this is one from 1938. I actually bought this from Dan Moyer and it is one of my favorite photos. It's a very early example of a color snapshot. So then we have um, Polaroids or instant film. So when you got the instant film, you could take more discrete photos because you didn't have to bring your film to be developed somewhere. So here is a man who is cross-dressing. You can see the string in his hand because he's uh, taken the photo himself right there. Later on, this is the same person, but it's a different camera where they had a timer attached. So you didn't need to have the, the selfie string. Also in the 1960s, um, the three and a half by three and a half color photo with the white border became very popular. I was born in 1963. It's my favorite era. I love the photos because people have fun. You took photos of anything. Please do not pee in our pool. <laughs> also, this is 1970s and it's an album of jean decoration. But once, once you get to the 70s, there's no borders on the photos anymore. I mean, there are a little, but it's, it's kind of over. And then, I mean, okay, so this is before the nose job. I just love this. I would like a wall of this. Actually, I have enough of these photos to make a wall of it. But you can, the way you use photography is for everything in your life. I don't have the afters, so I can't tell you what they look like, but I love the befores. It's a bunch of photos of women missing limbs. So there's a lot of fetishes out there. This is a whole collection of them. I think I have hundreds of them. There's always history, like, you know, leave the people in the teepees alone, to, you know, you know, you had to educate people. So my God, I'm having a drink after this. <laughs> and and I love, as I said before, writing on images. I think there's a book coming out in the next couple of months with writing on images. And uh, Ransom Riggs did one also called, um, oh my God, what was it called? Well, it's Talking Pictures. So. So now are some themes that people look for. People taking pictures with cameras in the photos and both these cute little girls each have a camera. Taking a picture of the dog. What time is it? Halloween. So holidays are always very popular. Christmas, Halloween, the beach, birthdays, weddings, those kind of things, those themes you see over and over again. People posing by TV sets in the 1950s, it is a very common theme and a lot of people collect them. Double exposure photos. Some people don't understand them. I mean, this is pretty fabulous and it's also a Polaroid, so it's unusual. People with their backs to the camera, a lot of people collect that. Snowmen. So this is a wallet photo. They're pretty popular. As you can see, it's very damaged, but it's also very loved and um, very popular right now. Another damaged photo. Um, this one is a manipulated photo, so it's a Polaroid, and while it was wet, people would use a stylus or something to manipulate the colors, the enamel, whatever you call that. Oh, and now we're to Dick. So as some of you know, I like to collect Dicks, and that would be 
photos of people, places, and things named Dick. So there's big dicks, little dicks, lady dicks, driving dicks, all sorts of dicks that you can think of. I have cat dicks, dog dicks, horse dicks, donkey dicks. The list goes on and on. Here's Dick Johnson, Dick again, Dick. This is a new one, gorgeous Dick. And I posted it recently on Facebook and people said, but we can't see it. Ha, 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 ha. About five years ago, I self-published a book called Dick. There was a soft dick and a hard dick. And in this case, the soft dick was just as pleasurable as the hard dick. This has sold out, but I have this new little version. Oh, you can't see me, I think, or maybe you can. Uh, this little version that I will have with me at the uh, Rare Book and Manuscript uh, shindig next month. And if you come over and ask me, I'll give you a free copy. I think I should have them by then. And some books I like are The Snapshot Chronicles by Barbara Levine and, um, yep, and Haunted Air. This cover photo was, he, uh, he bought that from me. This one is good for people that are interested in uh, gay men. Uh, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, which was made into a movie. There are photos from me in here. Also, Aaron Waters. Anonymous by Robert Flynn Johnson is kind of one of the first books that really got the snapshot going. And The Art of the American Snapshot, it was a show, I think in uh, 2006 or 2007. Robert Jackson, who is a good friend and customer of mine, um, and it was a whole show at the, um, the National Gallery in Washington, D.C. on snapshots. And museums are slowly uh, coming around to having snapshots in their collection. Um, and, um, and that's about it. Oh, and there's my info. <laughs> so if you want to follow me on Instagram, House of Mirth Photos, Facebook, Erin and I also run a snapshot group on um, Facebook called Snapshot Mafia, where people share their photos. Um, and that's about it. Is that okay? I hope that's all right. Stop share. Okay. Fabulous. That oh, was damn. So we can look. I'm sorry, James. I didn't see that. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to. I, I got nervous. So I know I went. Bleh. Yeah, no, I, I was going to, you know interrupt you but uh, that's okay so um yeah if anybody has any questions um write them in the uh, chat i actually have a first question which is um so what was the cost of the original kodak like number one like, you what know that's very funny because i just was refreshing my information and it was 25 dollars for a hundred um for a roll of a hundred pictures and that's what year 1888 so, what so it was that? really in the beginning, it was rich people that could afford it, but quickly it became a sensation, kind of like the iPhone. Right. But so was there like a, yeah, that's the other question that was going to go to is like, so what did the price situation go? Like, it's, did it start high, go low, high? Like, was there like eras where people could afford it more or less? Um, well, that, that I don't really know. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that, I, especially up to the 1950s, I think you generally had more money if you had a camera. Um, it's rare to see African American photo albums. I mean, they're there, but they're generally in not very good condition, which I can never figure out why. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. How, wait, what's that, that? And how long did the circular image format go on from Kodak? Into like the mid 1890s, I think 1896 off the top of my head, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I have yet another question. Um, this whole thing that you, you talked about at the end about museums, what was the, what is their like, uh, why have they not collected them? And what is your thought on that? And, and um... Because they're uh, amateur, I think. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you don't know who took the picture, so you can't attribute it. Um, there is one collector that all of us uh, that 
sell snapshots now. Uh, Peter Cowan in New York City. Yeah, who, I know Peter. Yeah, who donates a lot of his snapshots to different museums. So like so many museums in the United States have had shows with Peter Cohen's snapshots. Um, so, right. So they don't like buy, they don't like spending the money. Apparently, don't you know? This is what I hear. Right, but is this <laughs> to do with? Then they can't that they can't attribute to it, so they can't attribute person. Well, to it, so then they can't put a name they don't, on it. They don't take it as seriously as you know a Dan Arbus photo or you know a known photographer. Uh, Kate writes. What are the different aspects of a snapshot that you use to assign value to them? Big question, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. So, well, there are certain uh, topics that are very popular. For example, um, like those Polaroids I showed of the man dressed as a woman. Um, I know a lot of people look for that, so the price is higher generally. and it depends on what I know. like there's people collect all sorts of things. I have customers that collect people with bare feet, their eyes shut, their back to the camera, uh, gas stations, um, uh, people eating ice cream. Like there's so many different categories and I, I've been doing it so long that I know all these people that collect things. So I know, I know, Price is more or less what I can get. Um, albums, I always look up, you know, if there's a theme, trying to figure it out. Kind of the, it's the same way as, as what you sell. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, when did you um, come up with the, uh, when did you start doing your, um, your dick collection? So that started, I would say, around, 2012, I used to take photos of people who annoy me, which is most everyone, um, and post it on Facebook and say, dick of the day. Um, I would never show a face, but you know, the back of the head. And one day somebody said, oh, I know who that is. And I was like, you know what? Someone's gonna shoot me. I can't be doing this anymore. And that day um, I had a box of photos that I was going through and I went through and the first photo that I showed before Dick Johnson popped up and I was like, oh my God, I need to be collecting dicks. And it it went from there. And uh, now I get doorstep dicks where people just send me dicks when they find them. And I'm always oh, looking for good that's dicks. Awesome. That's, that's the next book, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. Doorstep dicks. Yeah. Um, Aaron writes, um, but it's also entirely subjective. How much do you like the photo? In yeah, terms she's right. And that's, Erin's uh, absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's like times I know Aaron and I have both done this where we find a photo and we absolutely love it. And our price will be a lot higher than, than people want to spend. And it's because we want to keep it for a while. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, Susan asks, have you ever acquired something with the expectation that it was taken by an amateur only to learn it was taken by a well-known person or a photographer? Uh, off the top of my head, no. Mm, that is a, that would yeah. be yeah. kind of interesting find. Yep. yep. Little, and, so, and speaking of people who collect things, Susan collects uh, photos of people doing yoga or stretchy people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah uh, like, yeah, yeah, Gumby's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have some for you, Susan. I'll have to send you some scans. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a little known, you know, Andy Warhol or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Any more questions? Sorry, I was so fast. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want it to um to interrupt you but I guess I should have but um yeah they, they were really super interesting and uh yeah it's it's something that I I know little of so every time I hear more about it I you know especially like when you said something about the um stamp box info on the photo right. posts 
um, like that was like, oh, of course there probably is some information on that. So yeah, that that I use all the time. I can send you the the website that I use because it's really great to date things. What is what is Kate says? What about vice versa, like a wait, wait? What about someone who's unknown who becomes famous afterwards, like a woman street photographer blanking on the name? Oh, Vivian Meyer. Vivian. Um, you know, I have these photos right now, these snapshots taken by this guy, Eric Henderson. And he's just there. I don't know what to do with him because he's alive. He knows I have them. Um, and he is this African-American man who lives in New York City and Texas. And in the early 2000s, he took film, put it in a brownie camera from around 100 years ago and started taking these snapshots. And they're so good. Mm. I don't know what to do with them. because How, how did you come upon years. them? Sorry? How did you come upon them? Uh, a friend of mine um, who sets up at the Flea in New York City sold them to me, and he bought them there from somebody who bought them from a storage unit. Mm. So when I figured out who they were by, because they weren't signed or anything, but I, I don't remember, remember how I figured out it was him, but I sent him a message on Instagram and said, is this you? Because I just bought a lot of these photos. And he said, yes, and I'm happy to sign them for you. I own the copyright. I have the negatives. I had some photos in a friend's storage facility and he didn't pay his bill and they, they sold, you know, they made it to the flea market. Wow. So another storage unit incident. Yep. The big, yeah. Um, Sandra Dolmich asks, how long have you been collecting? Could you show your info again? You want to see the photos again? No, your info, like your, how to get in touch with you. And oh, sure. your, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I have been, uh, selling photos since about 1998 and, um, I started selling on eBay and I, I still have people that started buying from me on eBay, 1998, 1999, still buy from me today, which is a pretty great thing. Share screen. Um, can you see that? Uh, yeah. So um, Sandra also asks, um, what moved you to to start collecting? What was your like, what was the, uh, you know, what made you feel like you really needed to do this? Oh, I liked it. I saw the photos, the snapshots as art, and I've always loved art and history. So it kind of combines the two of them. So um, that's how yeah yeah did you did you did you have a camera as, as a kid I did in fact I have a I should have put it in here I have a snapshot of me taking a photo of somebody with a box camera from when I was like eight years old so is that called a brownie or something yeah the brownie oh yeah okay yeah. excellent uh any more questions uh it doesn't look like it well, thank you so much. That was really great. That was really fun. Okay. Um, thanks everybody for coming. If anybody um, has any other ideas for uh, somebody giving a talk, reach out to me because we're always looking for people um, and uh, just really love a little mid-afternoon chat. Stop right. cataloging for a couple minutes and uh, take a break. Get to see our our fellow booksellers and ephemera and photo dealers. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Okay, thanks. Okay.